I'm guessing this is going to be everybody. Hello, welcome to this May 11, 2022 FileCloud webinar on FileCloud Sync tips and tricks. Thank you all for coming. I'm James Vaughn, and I'll be leading this webinar for the next, by my estimation, 15 minutes or so. Our webinars are held on most Wednesdays of the month. FileCloud is a hyper-secure content collaboration platform with public, private, and hybrid cloud solutions for file sharing, sync, and mobile access. And today we're focusing primarily on FileCloud sync tips and tricks. Let's begin by reviewing a quick overview of our topic today. FileCloud sync is a desktop client that allows you to download your files and folders located on your FileCloud account to your local computer. This way you can access said files without any internet connectivity and sync them according to the changes to FileCloud when you're back online. And by no particular order, this is our, this are gonna be the topics that are gonna be discussing today. How sync conflicts are gonna be handled, what sync conflicts are, settings, new versions and log files, read only sync, resettings FileCloud sync, and what is document editing mode. So this is already on the assumption that you already know the general or the basics regarding file cloud sync. So let's go ahead and uh, tackle what how sync conflicts are handled. Okay. So this is how a file conflict would look like. How what file conflict is is that basically a user made some changes in a local instance, and a change was also um, registered in the online site. So what happened here is that these two file versions weren't merged, but basically two versions were um, identified. One is the online site, and one is in the local machine. When we go ahead and right click, you can see file cloud sync. Resolve conflict. This option is now enabled. And from the dashboard itself as well, there would be an error letting the user know that they, there is a conflict. You need to resolve it. I go ahead and click this. Yeah. So letting me know that this is the local, I mean, this is the, uh, this is a server file as can be seen here. Let me go ahead and uh, do this from here as well. I click on this, resolve conflict, it will give me like a GUI information. This is way more better. As you can see, there is an option to open the local, local uh, version of the file. There's also the option to open the remote file. This allows me to compare accordingly and resolve as well as to which version that I'm going to use. So if I say I'm going to use the remote version, it's going to replace the local version as well. And you can see that's it's now what I'm using. Next up are the settings. Let's go ahead and go through this one by one. So this is basically folder location. Whenever you, this is where your files are gonna be located. If I click on open sync folder, this is where all the user's files or team folders or everything that he has access to or whatever the um, is configured for them to sync to, it's gonna be located. This can be changed. I'm just using the default, but whenever you change this, bear in mind, if you change this after, and some files have already been synced, you actually need to move them as well to the new location. Otherwise, yeah, there could be some data loss. As also stated in the warning here. Upload and download rate, rate limits is something that you can configure or an admin can configure for the users. Um, you can set up certain 
speed limits, especially if say they are um, maybe using Falcon Sync internally and you want to limit their speeds, or they're just in a local or a remote location with slow speeds and you maybe want to schedule their rate limits for specific dates. So that can be done as well. Active sync hours is pretty much the same as um, what was specified earlier regarding the dates. You can spe set specific days and times according as to when sync or the sync process occurs. This option, remote management, allows or basically gives consent to the admins to push certain configurations from File Cloud to the sync application. And uh, we do have the documentation for this. It basically, you have to go to the system policy and you can push device XML configurations from there. But this, when this is enabled, um, those configurations are then pushed to the user. If you are using proxy, you have this option as well. And language, very straightforward. For frequency, which is by the minimum 30 seconds, you can configure this to something higher so it doesn't consume as much uh, processing power. Um, and several miscellaneous stuff as well, which if I were to change anything, by the way, would need a reset of the sync application. So show notification for sync activity basically as a notification from the bottom right corner of the screen would show up whenever syncing is done. Um, run a start startup, pretty straightforward. Doc IQ. Doc IQ is an optional um, office integration. This is an optional installation. So, whenever at first you install File Cloud Sync, you have this option to also include Doc IQ. If this wasn't installed, by default, this would be disabled. And show lock I status, it basically means that if a file is locked, you can see it from the file explorer as well. Okay, so new versions and log files. How is that handled? You go to the help section of File Cloud Sync and go to version. By default, it checks for ver new versions automatically. When it does, it will let you know that hey, a new version is detected. You can choose to update it. You can go ahead and click update. Um, also, when you first start up FactLab Sync or you first logged in, it will also check for updates as well. Next is say, for example, you encounter an issue and you want to give like a log file to support. Well, it can be easy when you, if you are able to replicate it. You can then go ahead and go to help, export sync log file, and export the log file. One save. And that pretty much is it. You can also click on open log folder. It should show the most recent sync log, which is this one. Okay. Next up is read only sync. So what read-only sync is, it is an, it is an on-prem available feature. Um, this, is, this only works with on-prem because you actually need to configure something from the back end. So you have to go to the cloud config PHP file, which is basically uh, you going to uh, where your file cloud server is located. So, so go to my web server, Apache, and up to issue docs and config, and open up cloudconfig.php. This is one. So this is the setting that you need to enable first. Define the cloud enable read only sync, then one. And what that does is that if say you want to share a particular folder, we log in.
So say, is, for example, I have a particular folder that I just want, well, this user to be able to, well, read only. I don't want them to make any changes and all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, that is possible. So what do you need to do as an admin? Well, you first need to select and share that folder and give that user view, download, upload, and sync permissions via the share. Next up is via folder permissions, grant that you have this enabled, you need to only give them the read permission. Everything else should be disabled. Um, share and folder level security permissions work in hand in hand together. So because of the overlap, because this is explicit deny, it will only uh, read only privileges will be the only thing that applies. So let me go through here to any of the documents. And let's say I'm going to go ahead and edit one of them. For sure. Yeah, sure. They can still make any changes. Oh, let me, let me open that up again. See, they can make any changes accordingly, click save. And you can see that, yep, there are some pending changes from file cloud uh, side, uh, from, from the local machine side. But let's just refresh for a bit and wait on it. And as you can see, the changes weren't applied. So that's pretty much how read only works. Um, any changes coming from the local machine side are discarded. So none of the changes are actually saved to file cloud or to your file cloud um, web browser or for, for file cloud instance. So Next up is, I uh, believe, reset. So how, how reset works is basically just removes all the configuration that you've done, all this stuff, and logs you out. And that's pretty much it. It doesn't actually have any bearing on the files within the system. So if you need to remove them, that is something that has to be done manually. So as you can see, if I go ahead and click on reset, click on continue. Files are still there. The thing is, uh, yep, it just means that it's not being synced anymore. If I go ahead and click on get started, yeah, it's gonna ask me to log in back. I'm only logging in from a local instance. And as you can see, yeah, it's, trying, it's asking me if I need to sync everything. I want to move on and show you what document editing mode is. Let's go ahead and uh, click on, yep. So this is what document mode editing mode is. It doesn't, because you're not actually syncing the file, syncing is off by default. What it does is that basically you're using file cloud sync as the default application to find uh, what program you have in your local machine that is compatible with the files that are, you're going to be opening up within your uh, file cloud web browser. So if say I'm going to be opening up a Word document, Say, for example, I don't have Office Online or I don't have Google Docs integrated into my system, but I do have edit and desktop. The, this op particular option enabled, which is also, by the way, in customization and show edit and desktop option is enabled here. So if say I have this enabled, well, I can just go ahead and click this and allow file cloud sync to open up a web call and open up that document. 
So say first of all, I'm gonna open up a PDF file. I don't have a PDF PDF viewer installed in my system. Let's see what uh, sync opens up. It opens up um, Internet Explorer Edge. So open up the PDF file. So yep, and save. And that pretty much is in regards to document editing mode and file sync and tricks and tricks. Uh, anybody have any questions? Okay, um, I mean, it, for sure, if you have any questions after, no worries, you can just let us know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's not, I, I understand if there isn't anything yet, for sure, um, just let us know. Um, a quick start guide will be emailed to all the attendees. Um, if you, yeah, if you have any questions, concerns, feel free to contact us at support at .com. We also have our documentation at www.falco.com forward slash support talks. Uh, I want to thank everybody for attending my webinar today. Next up on May 18, 2022, our webinar will be on how to maximize Falco Sync and Drive for your optimal use case. You can register for our next webinar at https um, colon forward slash forward slash www.falco.com forward slash falcloud hyphen university forward slash. If you're interested in learning more about FileCloud, you can get a free 14 day trial today by going to filecloud.com and clicking the free trial button on the top left. Again, I wanna thank everybody for joining the webinar. All of you have a great day. Bye-bye.